Again, for those just joining, we're going to get started in about 30 seconds. Dora, good to see you again, two times in a row. Love it. All right, y'all. Just a couple of notes before we start the field trip. If you have any tech questions um, about audio or video or anything, just make sure to direct message those to me. I am your field trip support person, Alexa. And otherwise, if you want to turn your cameras on, now is an awesome opportunity, even if you're not gonna have them on the whole time. We like to know that field trips are not webinars. They're actually places where we can gather in community. Hey, y'all, and just be with each other in the middle of the day or nighttime, whatever time it is, and yeah, connect across this virtual world. So I'm gonna invite y'all to just give each other a wave with your cameras on. It also really helps our hosts to be able to see the faces that they're interacting with. Um, yeah, and just so you know, you're not you know, in a, in a black box alone, you're with each other. And another note, while you're sharing screen or while the hosts are sharing screen, there's a little white line between the screen and the people. And you'll notice this when they start sharing their screen. You can pull that to the left or the right in order to see more or fewer people when the host is sharing screen. Okay, that's all from me. Um, Jennifer and Brian, take it away. Good morning from many places. <laughs> We're so glad to be hosting this travel to Orange County gallery in Laguna Beach we experienced together um, not too long ago but continues to remain in the digital space so we're really happy to share what that entailed and the physical build out to now the virtual experience that you will all be learning about here during our time together so um, I'm Jennifer Keel I founded my company 70 degrees and we archive exhibit and preserve art and history and so when Brian uh, approached our collaborative uh, group called Multimuseum, which is being built out this moment in Laguna Hills, California, to share our en plein air collection at his gallery in Laguna Beach, we were thrilled. We knew it was an opportunity to bring our collection and our matriarch who helped establish a lot of the Laguna Beach entities that um, ex still exist. So, if you know Laguna Beach and you've had a chance to swing by, you know it's an art colony and they have a long standing history of celebrating the arts. And we have um, just a really vibrant support in that um, people who are starting their career or wanting to retire and, you know, fill, fulfill these dreams of having a gallery, they, they make dreams happen in Laguna Beach from the college side to um, wherever you are, um, maybe a brand new artist and you're just discovering. So there's something for everyone. And so um, we, we feel like we have this opportunity to share at every level the history of this movement. And I primarily work in historical collections, but Brian being an artist himself, he knows um, the, the student base and what's being done these days. And so digital technologies are happening now and so we're all about embracing the historic but also venturing into the contemporary and showing these spaces but um Brian tell them a little bit about yourself and how we collaborate <laughs> yeah hello everybody good morning am I still the speaker here is it coming on I think it is it okay can you all hear me all right all right cool so yeah, my name is Brian Hagee. I run the LCAD Gallery um, down in Laguna Beach, and it's an offshoot of the Laguna College of Art and Design. And we have about 700, 750 students that attend there. Um, maybe about 100 or so in the fine arts and the more traditional medium, plus we have an MFA program. Uh, but you know, I would say 75% of our students are also in the digital media with uh, design, game art and, and uh, uh, things like that, animation. And so we do all kinds of ex exhibits at, at the gallery. And we tend to do about one 
a month and one every, I, we, we do about 12 exhibitions every year within the gallery. So it just depends, some are six weeks, some are three weeks. So we're constantly uh, creating new exhibitions there in, in real life too. It's a, it's a real gallery, not just a virtual gallery. So I would say a, a few years, that, well, I'll give you a little bit more history about me. So probably for the last 25 years, I've been working. I got my uh, BFA in uh, drawing and painting. And then a little bit later, my MFA in traditional uh, fine art drawing and painting too. So I kind of come from that place. And then years ago, I started working in um, the, for galleries, doing installation, moving art around, exhibitions. From there, I moved from different galleries in Los Angeles to Laguna or to Los Angeles County Museum of Art, LACMA. I worked there for about six years within their exhibitions and then later came over to um, LCAD and started running their gallery. And I've been there for about seven years now at LCAD's gallery. So that's a little bit of history of my background. And then, uh, yeah, so I think that's about all I have to say about myself and then uh, the gallery itself, yeah. Oops. Yeah, Jennifer, why don't you take it away? And now you know more about us, right? So we're behind this and we're so excited to host this because guided tours um, typically happen in person. So we thought, why not do it virtually? Because we're um, with a very digital presence. And so please follow our story as we um, follow our social. <laughs> We'd want to share and collaborate. So today's purpose is to show you um, what we did, but also to stay connected. And I feel like this is a very awesome community for that. So as you saw when you were RSVP, um, this is the, the gallery. This is it. This is downtown center of Laguna Beach. And this is physically how the gallery was shown. And it so happened that our primary um, person who of interest, the Nellie Gale Moulton, who helped establish the college, uh, is it's the first time her collection's back in Laguna Beach uh, since she lived there. And it's a retrospective in that way, but it also coincided with the college's anniversary. So a lot of exciting things happening um, at the college and you should totally check it out if you're ever in town. It's, it's worth the visits in the canyon, it's beautiful. But um, we wanted to like describe a little bit about the pieces. So when you see them, you'll feel a little bit more attached to them. And um, what you're witnessing is this California en plein air movement. And um, it's obviously it stems from another movement you may have known from Van Gogh to Monet and all these masters. Uh, it transferred to California um, in the late 1800s. It started to develop and the artist colony that we refer to really took its height in the 1920s period. So before that, beachgoers would just kind of hang out there. They like put tents on the beach and it was sort of like nomadic in the way that no one really permanently lived. There was a very summer only colony. And so by the twenties, they were building like traditional cottages that we love and are featured in some of these paintings. So um, these are masters in our area. So if you ever go to a gallery downtown and you see these works, uh, Frank Cuprian's like the, the height of, you know, capturing this uh, everlasting glow and you, you can sense the, his, his style and he has done many of these series. And so it's quite beautiful. And um, we really admire his work along with another famous artist, William Went, in that Went Green. And it's really, uh, we, we love the kind of ocean ranch approach where you have your rolling hills of green and open ocean spaces is kind of what our area is known for. She also, our, our matriarch studied with Edgar Payne and they, they all traveled together. It was kind of a really small town vibe. So if anybody was an artist, they had the opportunity to go on these um, paint outs basically. And they'd go up to Yosemite and, um, just all over throughout, especially throughout the Southwest, like the Grand Canyon and that subject matter, it's really cool to like compare because it's the same subject, but different perspective and technique. And you can kind of see um, where they 
trained and mentored each other with the way that they capture light and more impressionist in the style of the water and the way it crashes. So these works um, are because Nellie studied with all those prior slides of people. And so these were her renditions of canyons and oceans and um, the beauty and the serenity of each of those. And they're kind of known as like early conservation people in the way that open space was preserved through painting and the subject matter can create this ideal, what does it look like without um, large populations and you know, kind of this idea of letting the, the land be at peace with itself. And so um, in Laguna Beach, it certainly has spearheaded like the canyon movement and helped us like preserve it and intact even as we grow and kind of push our borders with our bordering cities to Newport Beach and uh, Dana Point. So it's kind of a, a way to honor the, the legacy of it. Um, for those who have their phones and would like to keep this somewhere on their phones for later and do this tour on their own, um, you can scan our QR code. And we really think this is kind of a helpful time with um, the advent of newer technologies and why not do labels that have QR codes that have bit.ly's and shortened links so people can learn more. <laughs> And so we're all about it. So if you wanted to scan the slide, please do. And but today we're your guides. <laughs> so um, and this video here is on um, our YouTube. So if you wanted to see our version of what a tour could look like, uh, you could do that. But we really wanted to like show you um, and give you the tour ourselves. So I think we should just jump on in and maybe gal the gallery. Um, itself will speak to you a little bit. And Brian is no stranger to the space. So I think uh, the beautiful thing is that it, it showcases um, itself in the way that the light and um, just the balance. And he has such an eye for curatorial. So it was really fun to, to work with him, collaborate with him with, from hanging to deinstallation. So. <laughs> Um, if you wanted me to, Brian, I could like kind of jump around or if you wanted to do that yourself, it's totally up to you. I don't know how you wanted to guide them through the space. Uh, I can take the screen from you. Okay, awesome. Um, and I'll just kind of go through our process and how we got to this point. And then also, let's see. So I'm going to take... I'm going to share the screen here. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you see it now, everybody? Okay. So I just wanted to give you guys all a little background on how we got to this point. So, like everybody's probably aware of, when COVID hit in March 2020, we had a uh, never anticipated that to happen in the gallery just to shut down completely to the public for, you know, six months to a year. So I was trying to figure out a way to get people to come and see the exhibitions because we still had exhibitions. We still wanted to put them together and put them up and we had built them up over the past months. So we started looking at options on way, ways that I could get people to um, view the gallery even during COVID. So one of the products I came across was the Matterport um, virtual space app, I guess you could say. And traditionally it was always used by realtors. So in March, 2020, when I came across it and when I scoured the internet and scoured all the other galleries and museums, looking at what everybody was doing to showcase their work virtually, in that kind of gallery type museum setting, I came across Matterport and Matterport was traditionally used by realtors to showcase their, their spaces. If somebody wanted to buy a home in New York and come to Los Angeles, they could view it virtually and kind of get an idea. So I saw the potential of being able to um, create our space virtually using this, this application. So you can you can go on and you can actually get and try this out for yourself and and do your apartment if you want you get 
I believe one free space and there's no charge just to kind of play around with it. And then if you want to take it further, you can pay $10 a month to get five active spaces. That's what I do because I only need five at a time. So I have other exhibitions. So we have our Sid Mead exhibition that's up right now that I virtually produce this way. And what this does is we're fully back physical now. But what this does is the outreach to our audience is, you know, 10 X from just the average person coming in, walking in and see it or taking a photo and putting it on social media. Now people can actually come into the gallery. So I'll show you, I'll show you our, um, what it looks like on our end. So basically through the computer, you don't create it. You do it through a mobile app. So you download a mobile app and on your iPhone, and then you, you take pictures and it directs you how to take the pictures. And you sit, I basically just set my tripod. It's very low, low tech. I set my tripod on a camera. Or I mean, I set my camera on a tripod and then move it around and take all the shots. And then I download it. And then the program rastifies it and creates the virtual preview. So from my end and inside, it looks like this. So you can go into clicking the details that you want to put on any add-ons they have google street move different kind of floor plans some of these are basically more for realtors any these are all the downloads that i'm able to create through so i can create pictures i can create these dollhouse views which are very interesting and especially showing other people or clients or artists what the gallery space looks like or potential views and floor plans. It's really nice to be able to showcase that. So it's been very helpful in that, in that way. And then let's see, let me get out of my screen's so full. I got to, okay, so I'll exit that. And let's see. So you can also go into the editing mode and basically this is within the space how I can go in and let me get over onto this side. Sorry guys, I got trying to get you guys in here too. All right, so you can pick and choose how you wanna add different elements to the space. And then you can preview and publish. So I'll preview it right now so you can get an idea. So this is you coming in. You can move, I create these, basically these little round dots are where I took the photos. So that's the point of reference for each piece. And because the views aren't that good in here, you can't really read the labels. We, we put this up here. And then within these applications, you can also attach like video loops, links, all kinds of things that can add to the experience. So I could take you directly into, you know, this artist's bio and everything else and any kind of media that they may have. So it's a really interesting way to um, showcase the work of the gallery and, and send it to a lot of people, which is really nice. And so now this, this view in general, now there, there's two different options that I had. This we're gonna continue to use because it's gonna expand our outreach a lot, even with our gallery spaces. But, and I'll exit out of this. But there, now this is the, there, there are two different camps within the virtual exhibition space, I guess you could say. This one, is not really a virtual exhibition. It's a real exhibition that I've basically photographed and created a, a virtual 3D view of it. So it's, it's very different than, than say, for example, I'm gonna showcase, um, this was another um, application that I used. I thought this one, this exhibit gallery was probably the most professional looking, completely virtual gallery. So, and this is exhibit.com, you guys can go check that out. And 
what they do is they offer a monthly, so you can purchase a gallery for just a month. And, and so let's say you just want this gallery right here. And it shows you kind of the heights of the walls, because what you're doing is you're basically taking really good quality pictures of your artwork and you're, you're sizing them accordingly to their realistic size. And then you're placing them within this digital virtual gallery. So it's not a real space like the Matterport that you're just taking photos of and creating. This is actually a fully virtual space. So I can show you a virtual exhibit and then they offer a bunch of different ones. So this one's $25 a month. You could just come in, buy this for $25 a month publish it, produce it, send it around to all your clients or your interested patrons and have your own show and possibly create a lot of interest for your art, having a little virtual gallery. And these are the different options that they, and I've used all these options. Mm -hmm. And for me, this really was the more professional look. And let's see, let's see if they have, the spaces do feel different in, in terms of they do and I don't have this I don't have this up and running freedom. so I can't yeah. show you one of our spaces but I can right now just take you in to let's see take you into one of the spaces let's uh let's try this one hmm. Now this isn't ours. And then you you can plug all that in the way you feel. Now that doesn't necessarily look that appealing to me, but you can do it your own way. It's all customed mm -hmm. to what your needs are. And... and then basically we've actually used this gallery before. You move around the space and you can view different artwork and when you get up to it mm -hmm. it'll allow you to click on it this one's not doing it but, but these yeah. also have a window that pops up and you're able to view all the artwork in these kind of galleries too so this is a fully virtual space which is different and i'm not using this one as much because we're back right in uh real life again <laughs> now, when we were fully on lockdown, these were my exhibitions, a lot of these. So we were doing a, one or two of these a month during lockdown. So that's kind of the difference between the two applications. And these are, in my opinion, two of the better ones that I found, the exhibit and the Matterport for two fully different exhibit, for two fully different types of uh, virtual experiences. And, and I can, let's see if I can uh, go back to the space. And then it also gives you stats about how many visits right. and uh, all kinds of other things that you can do. One, one part that I, let's see if I can, one, well, I think, you know, you guys can also just get on and and really, really get in there and try to investigate it and see how it all works. But some of these features are just really amazing, like the like I said before, these dollhouse Thank features. Mm -hmm. And I can actually take that dollhouse within the edit of the space right down here. And you can add floor plans and do all kinds of things. But I love the dollhouse. So it takes me. And I can spin it around and really look at it mm -hmm. and plan my next exhibitions too, which is really kind of cool. And then you can take a shot of this and send it to somebody. So in our team, when we had a reception, since they were still happening in person, the video captured people in the space and added warmth. And so like we embedded those YouTube links into some of the labels there. So those round circles you can program to be anything. It, maybe you had a film on the history of each artist and you wanted every patron to see those YouTube 
sessions and maybe behind the scenes, maybe as a, an artist, you have a process film um, of how you create. And so when you think about these spaces, um, it's good to consider what kind of media you could also in, like embed into it. And this is all um, an iframe. So we've been taking this hyperlink and putting it on our WordPress websites, putting it in our e-blasts on social media. And so it's very, um, I think, informative when you walk through it and you really want to see piece by piece and read label by label um, what we, we really showed in real time. You really um, have a sense of place but uh, it's kind of fun to be able to integrate the films and show people what it was like when we opened the space and closed it out since it was in real time and allow people who live all over to see it and transfer that experience into this virtual world. And also I noticed that we had a, um, let's see, we have a, we have that little video clip of the reception too, yeah, which will give an idea exactly. of people. I, I see it in here, but I got to get back to it. Let's see. I guess I'll go back to the edit. So yeah, so let's see. It was it was and our we top one. opted not to do a catalog. This actually served as our virtual catalog. So when people ask for more information, our postcard that announced this and it had the QR code so people could go and scan it and then go to these web pages that you're seeing here in our chat box. So we like to think we saved printing costs too. So it was really um, integrating that technology, just a QR code and hyperlink um, to see all this. It, it gives patrons a chance to learn more on their own time and their own way. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's what you can add to it also. And as LCAD likes to say, great art matters. And we're just thrilled to be able to be a part of it. Oops. I, I didn't realize once you take your hand off it, it goes away. But that, that gives you an idea of, of the extent of what you could do. You could put video for each piece. I've seen a lot of people also as people are trying to figure out new virtual ways and you know as the metaverse is developing people are actually taking this type of program and i've noticed a few artists they'll put it inside of their studio and yeah. they'll have tags and it becomes this interactive experience and a way for people to bring the patrons into their into their studio and with tags they can also purchase and have links to purchase pieces right within that and I've had a lot. So as creative as you can get with this, that's kind of what it was. When I picked it up, it was literally a realtor's um, app. And now it's starting with COVID over the last two years to develop into more and more uses, which is pretty cool. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the best for this so far. Now, they keep changing and a lot of things keep happening. So you know, you it's it's always a changing new dynamic field, but I'm excited to see what new things come because this really opened a lot of opportunities for us. Major institutions love this technology too. So we did our homework. Um, I have the really like this on the corner of this program, it has a little VR headset. There's a share button and also like an embed feature. And so, um, I mean, your patrons who are in this virtual, you know, metaverse and trying to engage with new audiences and technologies through oculus and this is part of the whole headset gear like subscription model that you get is to be able to transfer this to the hands of really anybody who's aspiring to learn more about art and culture and so google arts and culture um, has used this particular model frequently with their major partners so we feel for the long run, it's worth learning because it, it's become an industry norm. And historians aren't traditionally like technology people. That's why <laughs> I came up with a company called 70 Degrees, which is the optimal temperature to keep 
fine art in a space um, for long-term preservation. And so we, we believe in the idea of like Leonardo da Vinci method that he was yes, an artist, but also like a scientist and a mathematician and balanced all those fields of study into his craft. And so when we collaborate with the group, it's all about embracing all the technology and be try to be leaders and scale accordingly with every entity that we're working with. And so, I mean, there's huge impact with the college because this is very walkable and we have a lot of guests who routinely visit during their open hours. But beyond that, we realize there's a power to reach audiences virtually and continue to create new experiences there that will show with our statistics and social media follows and leads. And so we want that to be a testament to the design and um, the curatorial it takes to balance the space. And uh, it's just when you close a show out and you deassemble and deaccession and return all the loans that were uh, provided from other entities, it's hard to revisit that space just from the photo. So it's great to have this. It's now a way we can continually share it beyond the lifespan of the actual show. And so it's uh, incredible uh, to have the ability to keep telling that story through these devices. Yeah, I don't think we would have, I don't think we would have ever gotten this deep into the virtual world if it wasn't for the lockdown. So that really pushed us to dig really deep and try really hard to figure out alternative ways. And now it's become something that we use. And I think, you know, just like Zoom work meetings and everything mm -hmm. else, it's, it's kind of part of the new, the new fabric of the way we outreach and the way people see our exhibitions. And I'm always looking for new ways to showcase our exhibitions now. So yeah, it's been really helpful. So as a kind of takeaway, I wanted to show you some of the tools that we're using um, were simple, you know, curated gallery or room. So wherever you are, however you want to create a new job and listing, if it's personal or for the community, you just need the app and it works synchronously again on Apple and Android devices. A tripod that swivels, they actually manufacture their own. So you could opt in for that. And then draw some inspiration with your creativity and they actually have samples. Um, if you're like, I wonder how I should capture this, um, take ours as a sample and then go to the discovery part of their site and see all the other options and way of making it. But I think like what's so cool is this panoramic like view of the space and it's all VR. I mean, the idea of like the, there was preemptive like designs in history, like 1800s, there are these designs that, have two mirror images and basically it's the same thing as an oculus design but now we're taking it with better renderings and so um really it's kind of a cool reusing of the same idea of having a mirror view but um we hope like these tools help you and that you can learn how to use everything they have guidelines and behind the scenes like tutorials as you do the app and they generate mp4s and jpegs so Really, it's something you can save and share with anyone. These, if you don't want to just use Matterport, you can just take your collective downloads and data and archive it, which is what I'm about. <laughs> I really love um, taking the media and being able to share and showcase on social. And so it's really important for us to be able to show our backers and our community um, how we're doing this. And so it's nice to be able to have a place and such simple technologies of MP4 files and JPEGs that are generated from the app that allow me to save that in perpetuity. Really, it's like long lasting beyond us. So we saw this film, so stop it here. Well, but, and that's, the, uh, that's the interesting thing, Jennifer. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Am I still on? Yeah, is you can take that Matterport, you know, 360, take your iPhone and capture the whole space. And then you can go in and shoot photos from all that and create the 360. So you have a lot of digital information that you can download directly to your laptop. And then you have that whole exhibition archived. It's, and it's like long lasting format and it's pretty compressed. I mean, that format's pretty easy to 
share elsewhere too. So it's, I'm really excited about the ability to not really close the show in a way it keeps going in that way. And it just allows us to share beyond the length of the physical gallery. And now you've rotated two shows since this and yeah. we continue to be able to partner in this way and, and showcase it through creative mornings and tell our story of how we collaborated um, then and now really. So we hope to hear from you guys. I know we have some questions here and um, want to engage with each of you and answer as much um, of that as well. But I wanted to give you our information, make sure that you knew how to reach us, make sure you're following our social media if you'd, you'd like to see behind the scenes, we're doing more and more of that. So this is really was a deep dive in technology and hopefully you learn from just viewing some of the back end design of the, the software and how really easy it is to, to get your device existing and grab one of the tripods you already own and just mount it and carefully rotate it. So it, it creates as clean of a rendering as possible. And of course there are higher grades. You can always go with this technology. There are specialized cameras and equipment that are really even higher graphics. But I think for the purposes of this and working at a museum, it really is, is enough. And more than enough, it supplements even the need to go at times with maybe a virtual classroom that would like to do a field trip just like this and and they want to study on planar movement and we have this now as a resource and tool so that they can travel with us and be a part of this movement that's over 100 years old so Nellie Gail Moulton um, was a pioneer in, in her years and her her mentors her works of art which are shown here at Anna Hills that's literally 100 years old and it's going through conservation treatment right now and so uh, it's pretty amazing that we can tell these stories through this medium and I think really be on the advent of what's really um, going to be more and more common um, and we want to do more meta <laughs> type things so um, if you have questions for us we're all ears we're here to help you and collaborate and so um, we'll please just uh, capture our emails here and follow up with us. And maybe you have some specs of what you're working with and what you're trying to design. And um, please use this as a sample and engage with your communities in a new way. And I, I put my uh, email gallery at lcad.edu down here. So if you guys have any questions, I'm, I'm totally willing to uh, answer anything and you know any thoughts that you have on it, I'm, I'm willing to uh, participate because you know it's it's a new thing for me too and we we kind of make it happen by our own grit and creativity <laughs> so you know it's 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 not a big production and it's something that anybody could do and as an artist I've done myself just to showcase especially with the small exhibit virtual I can create small month-long exhibitions for thirty dollars yeah. and then send them out to all my contacts and just have a little preview. So that one too is, is really something to, to look at. I see Pearl has a, uh, her hand up. I don't know um, how we would want to engage, uh, maybe mute yeah. uh, <laughs> However, <laughs> Pearl, you're welcome to unmute. And then uh, Jennifer, I've also sent you a couple of questions that have come up in the chat. Hi, thank you so much for having us. And for having me, I just want to say that this technology actually has been very helpful to me because one of my friends has a visual disability and because I've been able to participate in a lot of, of virtual exhibitions, this actually enabled her to view the exhibitions from her own home with devices that actually helped her with her own challenges. So I want to say that may have not been something on the radar or an unintended consequence. This is a great example of a fantastic unintended consequence of the virtual spaces. So I think adding on to that um, as well is how do, uh, how do you envision the platforms taking more uh, considerations of um, impairments, whether it's visual or whether it's some sort of sensory uh, challenge? And how might that be something that even as an artist, I can see as something that I may need to think about in my own um, 
virtual exhibitions. Thank you. That's mm. a wonderful question. And I think a responsibility for us to give every audience an opportunity to visit with us. And it's become like the, the norm for AD accessible websites and design. We have to conform to uh, all the, the needs of our communities. And so as far as engagement and outreach and access, this has expanded our mission statement and made us more um, of accessible in a long-term way. And I think for, for our group at Multi Museum, we made it a, a promise as we open our doors physically for the first time in July that we want to continue to capture our spaces with Matterport for the reason that that or any other emerging technology because of that very reason is that we realize that not everyone can physically come and see us. And so it's made us um, realize that more and more that the pandemic with our forced closures, that to experience art in a visceral way that it's obviously powerful to be inside a gallery and there's something moving and texture and lighting, everything that you experience but as a substitute, if nothing else, uh, I need art in my life. <laughs> it's like one of those things that makes me human. And without it, I don't feel like um, it just, it fulfills in production from studio side to curatorial. And so having at least a virtual space to go to, it provided an avenue for me during the shutdown um, to see things that weren't traditionally always shown on any platform. So it's made it more of like a norm for all the large institutions to share their heirlooms and, and their archives that are, you go be, behind the, the scene. So, but it's really important, I think, to make that commitment. And as an institution, we have promised to remain accessible. And so uh, it really speaks to the needs of the global community and how we really need to engage with everyone. I think the biggest advantage of, of this, am I, am I, I don't see the green thing switching, so I, I'm not sure if people hear me, so. You do, um, that's just a Zoom setting. I can yeah, check. sorry. So, um, yeah, I think the biggest advantage is just the accessibility. If somebody could not come see it physically, they can see it. Um, other than that, I, I'm not sure, you know, how it can develop beyond that and it'll be interesting to see how the virtual world takes like visually impaired people into consideration um, because it is such a visual thing and not a tactile thing so I'm curious to see how it all develops for disability but one advantage is people being able to see it that may not be able to access or get outside or see something I mean you could you could um, view the gallery virtually from a hospital bed even. So that's one advantage. Um, could you speak a little bit more about the virtual galleries? Um, you showed those spaces that we can put our art in. Yes. Uh, not, yeah, be, I, and um, the cost, and, and is that an ongoing cost if you wanna keep it or can you just keep it for a month? No, you can just keep it for a month. I actually, we had it for about a year and then I canceled the subscription because I just couldn't put my energy into those exhibits anymore because there's still a lot of work that goes into them. You still have to curate them. You still have to place everything. You have to take images, you have to size it and you have to put it in the space. So you're basically curating an exhibition just like you would be in real life, but within the virtual world where with the Matterport you're just taking a photo of it basically and it's making it so with it when it comes to the exhibit program you can just have it you can buy it for one month each gallery depending on the size of the gallery some are 10 by 10 feet some are 30 by 90 feet you basically pay based on the size of the gallery so I think they I'm not exactly sure but I think they range anywhere from $20 to $60 or $80 a month, depending on the, sh the, the gallery. And then you just rent it for that month. And if you don't cancel it, they automatically renew it for the next month. So you have to go, you have to physically go in and say, I'm canceling the subscription. And, and so, yeah, that's, that's basically how that works. And Thank with, you. 
if you go on to the exhibit website, um, just type in exhibit virtual gallery, it'll pop up. Um, you'll, you'll see, and we should probably put a link for that. I'll, I'll grab a link for that website and stick it into the feed in a minute. But you can, you can go in and, and take the tour and all the pricing and everything's there. Wonderful, thank you. I mean, it, nowadays there are so many, far fewer galleries and so many more artists uh, that it gives us a chance to do our own promotion. Absolutely, I think that exhibit space is, is really a wonderful way to create your own exhibit and send it out to a thousand people and then send them all back to your website or your portfolio from that. And for $25, $30, that's a great marketing investment, I think, if you do it right. I mean, for your artwork. Beyond that, it's just about having the people. Right. right. <laughs> Engagement. Maybe, maybe a high school student can put it together for me. That's great. Absolutely, they can. It's so easy, actually. It's, it's really, it's, I mean, they give you pretty clear instructions. It's very simple. The hardest part, the one thing that you can run into trouble with, especially the ex exhibit one, is the quality of your artwork, image. the image. Yeah. So when you're taking a photo of your artwork, that is everything, because that's yeah. what they're seeing. If there's a glare, there's going to be a glare yeah. in the virtual gallery. If it's mm -hmm. blurry, if there's not enough, pic if there's too much pixelation, it's going to be there. So a, a, a good file size and a nice lighting, and you're still in the real world taking the picture. So it's not fully digital in that sense. You have to take that real world image and stick it in the digital and make it look real world. So the quality of your image is most important. Um, okay, now I have um, an old Apple um, aperture. So can I just pull out those images and put them on? Or put you them could. in? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. It just depends on the parameters of the files and what you're using, but it, I'm, I'm sure you, you can, you can load up any file you want and they'll, they'll stick it on that wall. It's just a matter of, does it look right quality enough, you know? Right. Well, thank you so much. I mean, that's a real resource. Uh, Absolutely. I'm sure. And your images too, when you edit them, it's good to, you know, crop them and edit them like you want the piece to look mm -hmm. you know what you give them is what goes on the wall kind of look ready <laughs> yeah it has to be ready production ready to be on just like the painting has to be ready to be hung in the gallery it's kind of a similar concept wonderful thank you so much thank yeah. you we had a question about how we're collaborating and prioritizing these types of exhibitions and for us, it was because of the relationship of our matriarch to the college and honoring the legacy of Nellie Gil Moulton and her entourage of mentors. But um, in general, I know a lot of students who portfolio there, we're encouraging them along their career path to start doing this sort of collaboration and with living artists in that way, um, it's a tool. So we, we're here to support your projects and, um, my company, So Many Degrees, can support any sort of collaboration and ideas you have, and we can consult in giving you some real data as far as, like Brian has cost and specs and data that will be meaningful for you guys um, who are creating these types of experiences. But um, I think you really see the power of this because um, it can be self-done or with a, someone who's a little bit more familiar with the technology and can harness it and share it pretty rapidly. So it's, it's amazing. And, and, I've, also, like and I've also noticed how the technology, even over the last two years from when I started it, when COVID started till now, it's, it's developed so fast. And yes. the, the, the dollhouse is much better formed. The technology is much easier and user-friendly. I mean, you even look at how things have changed in my world with creating um, designs, which are an important part of the gallery experience, virtually and in physical. And you have, you have uh, the programs like Canva, mm -hmm. G-A-N-V-A mm -hmm. that came up. And that basically takes 
you know, before you had to have a degree in Photoshop and Illustrator and all these right. other things to create a design. Now Canva makes it so user friendly. Anybody can create. It's just a matter of how creative you are. So I think these virtual tools, including Canva and Matterport and these other things, have really opened the doors for creativity for anybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest takeaway that I'm seeing happening and developing. And now with the metaverse developing even more, which people don't aren't quite sure what that is, but it is happening and it is coming. All these things are going to add more to this experience. So I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about the, the ability to be able to create freely and to share with everybody around the world. That's That wasn't happening five years ago. Mm -hmm. So we hope you come see us in Laguna Beach and Laguna Hills when our doors physically swing open um, for our one of our partner groups summer show and you see what we're hanging on our walls and interpreting and it's really I think there's nothing quite like in person still but this is pretty close to it is really what we're saying to those listening still and just trying to wrap your minds around how you can integrate this in your real world. So it's really been awesome to be able to build out faces and virtual labels and do all this but it's just basically we take the same file that we printed in person and put it right onto the walls in the space and so it's all about managing um the the artist and in, in their portfolio in that way and so if you're already using uh WordPress or any of these things, the iframe technology of this is why I really liked it when Brian was introducing it to our, our team. And so it's pretty interchangeable with anything you use, you can place that on a site. So, but it's so great to see everybody's backgrounds and variety of skills from librarians to graphic designers to educators. I took a sneak peek of our participants today. And so it was really neat to see all your faces this morning and afternoon, wherever you are, <laughs> to engage with you. And we really hope you keep following our story and go see Google Arts and Culture because they're on the frontier. That's an app out there for those who are looking to engage with more material, kind of what you saw today in the um, exhibitions that are traveling and going to a city near you. I'm going to put that link up there right now for exhibit. And Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I just got it and I'll put it in the feed here for you guys right now. Let's see. Okay. Okay, there it is. I just put it up. I'm the, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm the B, the purple B here. So that's the, that's the um, link to the exhibit website. So everybody can have that. Awesome, y'all. Thank you so much. That was so illuminating. And we're so grateful for your commitment to, you know, keeping this work accessible and or making it accessible rather. So and for teaching us how to do it for our own work too. Um, we're really grateful to have you. Cool. Thank you. It looks like everybody enjoyed it and yeah. Had good comments. So I'm I'm glad you appreciated it. And you know, yeah. our struggles can turn into some good fruit for everybody that's right yeah. <laughs> this um, is our collaborative cohort yeah. of artists virtually <laughs> yeah. yeah if anybody would like to say any words before we close now is your chance um, thank you very much this is really fantastic yeah thank you that was oh, very interesting you're welcome uh, many thanks it was so helpful Awesome, y'all. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. We will see you. I think we have one more cave day field trip today. I might have made that up, but I think that's what's happening. So maybe we'll see you there. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thank there you, everybody. Know. Bye. Thank you again, we're closing. Nice up. meeting you virtually. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you all. Fun. Yay. Bye.